Hey everybody, welcome back to Earl's Cooking Show. I'm Earl, today you're cooking with Earl and I'm gonna show you how to make a rub. Now I get so many people that ask me, Earl, what did you put on there? Can I get the recipe for your rub? What is it that you're doing? Well, I'm gonna show you my most universal rub. I've never shared this with anyone, so you're gonna be the first people to actually see it. This rub is so easy to make, but it can be used on so many different things, whether it's pork, fish, seafood, um, other seafood products, beef, uh, anything that you can possibly think of, I use the Ridiculous Rub on. Why? Because it's easy to make, it's not hard to get, and it goes a long ways. So, all you need is a quarter cup measuring unit, a tablespoon, and a teaspoon. These three things is all you need to make the Ridiculous Rub, and then of course, the raw seasonings. So I'm going to show you how we start out. The first thing I use is paprika. Paprika is one of those great spices that you can buy smoked, you can buy Spanish, you can buy from different parts of the country, but there's always a nice little unique flavor. But paprika is a fantastic base when making a rub, especially for beef and chicken and seafood. So I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of paprika. I'm just gonna put it in my mixing bowl. Then I'm gonna go with the chili powder. Chili powder is like Paprika, you can get it hot, you can get it mild, you can get it sweet, you can get it different colors, darker, lighter, this, that, and the other. This is just a basic chili powder, and I'm gonna put a quarter cup of that. Now notice I'm not packing it down, I'm just gonna put a quarter cup into the bowl. And guess what, just like that, I'm done with my quarter cup measurements. Next, we're gonna go to one of my favorite components when it comes to spices, and that's granulated garlic. Now you can buy garlic that's powdered, you can buy garlic salt, but we want the pure garlic flavor, and we want a little bit of texture in it, so we're gonna go with the granulated garlic. I'm gonna use the tablespoon now. Again, for my ridiculous rub, I'm just leveling it off, and just like that, we're done with granulated garlic. Then we're gonna go to freeze-dried chives. These are inexpensive, they create a great texture component to your rub, because when you're cooking, it's going to, um, it's gonna kinda of sit on whatever you're cooking. It adds a little bit of color, but it adds a great flavor. So we're gonna go a tablespoon of that. And obviously we need some more salt components. So we're gonna go with just seasoning salt. Seasoning salt's inexpensive. They've already done all the work to it. So we're gonna put a tablespoon of seasoning salt in here, right in there. And then we're gonna go with cumin. Cumin has kind of that um, Latin flair to it, but it works really good with seafood, with um, poultry, and with beef, for sure. Carne asada, you guys. So we're gonna add a tablespoon of cumin. Then we're gonna go with raw turbinado sugar. Now you can buy this anywhere. I like it because it's coarse, because it's good flavor. It's not refined. It hasn't, they haven't done a bunch of stuff to it, but it has this, and you can hear it as it's coming out. But if you look at that, when you're cooking with turbinado sugar, it's actually gonna help create that mahogany, that caramelization on your food, and it ties really well with all the spices. And then the last thing, which is probably gonna blow your mind, is I use regular old bouillon, chicken bouillon. Now you can use beef bouillon too, but I, I find that I use the chicken bouillon in so many different things, and with a rub, this works great because they've already added some sugars to it. They've got the salsa, the, the different solids and stuff like that. Um, chicken bouillon is actually made with like a dehydrated chicken that's been powdered. So we'll put that in there, and bam. Now we're done with our tablespoon. Moving on to our teaspoon. Ground mustard has a great flavor. Now you see a lot of cooks, they'll take and they'll slather down their meat with mustard and ketchup and different things like this. This is just a powdered version. So it ties in really well when you're doing, um, doing rubs. Rubs are designed to be put on the meat, typically ahead of time. It allows the meat to sit and it sort of soaks in and goes into the rub. Then we're gonna add onion powder. We're just gonna go with a teaspoon of that. And then for extra bite, we're gonna go over to cayenne. We're gonna put a teaspoon of cayenne. Teaspoon of thyme. And a teaspoon of rosemary. Now rosemary, when you buy it, it looks like pine needles, you guys. So I like to just take a little bit, put it in my hand, and I'll take that teaspoon, and then I'll just start to crush it down like this. And I've got a pretty good estimate of what a teaspoon looks like. And then I'll just throw that in there. Give it a whisk. 
and you see, oh man, the smell is amazing. I use this ridiculous rub on just about everything. Because if I want something simple, something that I can grab, so I'll go to, and I'm not trying to do something crazy or go with different country fusion flavors and stuff like that, I'll always grab my ridiculous rub. I also like to save the seasoning containers that I use in my own kitchen. And when I get done with those seasoning containers, I'll save them, and that's what I put my rubs in. So you go from the bowl to your container, simple as this, just grab a piece of paper, and just start dumping it in. And just like that, I am set on rubs for, oh gosh, well I cook a lot, so this is gonna get used fast. And a lot of times what happens is I'll go to a friend's house and I'll go and I'll make a dinner and I end up leaving the rub there. Why? Because it's so easy to use and people are always asking me, how did you make this taste like that? Well, now you have the secret. This is my own ridiculous rub. I just shared the recipe with you. It's a quarter cup, a tablespoon, and a teaspoon. You can make it at home, and look at this. You can't buy it in stores, but you can sure make it at home. I'm Earl, this is my kitchen. Make sure you like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time on Earl's Cooking Show. Thanks for watching.